Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for North Dakota Today. I'm Lisa Bedeau, and welcome back to the show. I know. Abby Furchner filling in for Chris. It's been, it's been a, a while. long time. I, know, I kind of forget that just because I love it when Jordan fills in. I'm like, yeah. we're just <laughs> continuing on the Valley Today, which we do all morning long. And so it's been nice that uh, you decided to continue on with me today. Yes. No break for you today, although today's assignment was not a tough one for no. you today. I did not complain at all today. I can't, I can't say that. I had a rough morning in this latest. It's Miracle Treat Day, and Abby spent the entire morning at like our favorite location ever, the Moorhead DQ as well. It is so much fun there. Just like going in, like just walking in in the morning, it's just such a fun environment to be in, especially on Miracle Treat Day. Everyone was so excited and so amped, and it was just so much fun. And then my favorite part of the morning, though, is that I know we've continued this kind of year after year, is the blizzard competition. Yeah, I, so we grabbed a little video. This is from the Valley Today this morning. So if people weren't watching, what is the, I call it the blizzard off. The blizzard off. Yeah, it's like, so that's Catherine and Teresa with me, um, and they're with the Children's Miracle Network. And so what you do is Troy picks a blizzard you make, and so we made Oreo blizzards. <laughs> and you have to, there's three things that are judged on it. You have to be judged on um, the consistency of your blizzard, how clean your station is. And this is where things got messy because the top came off. And I mean, if you don't use these machines regularly, they whip you around. And so my top came off uh, that little white part and it just flung the ice cream absolutely everywhere. So my station was not clean in this at all. But in fact, I think he called you out in the middle. Like, he did. He was like, Abby, turn it off. Turn off the thing. Aren't you going to clean up your station? And I was like, oh my goodness. But then you're also judged on taste. And so that's how we, we choose our winner in the morning. But it's so much fun. It is the greatest part of the morning. And before we tell everyone who won, uh, once again, why don't you tell us, you know, why this is a great day? Not just because you get to eat a blizzard. Right. Um, Miracle Treat Day is so phenomenal because every dollar or more that you get when you buy a blizzard um, goes to Sanford Children's Hospital. So it helps kids. Um, and I love this. It helps kids feel like kids during their hospital visits and during their hospital stays. So it goes to so many different programs and projects. And I know that there are um, Dairy Queens all throughout the region that are yes. participating in this. Not just the Moorhead DQ. Not just the Moorhead DQ. But what's really cool is that DQ donates all of their money to the Moorhead DQ, donates all of their funds for the blizzards, not just a dollar, but they donate it all. And so it all goes back to the local Sanford Children's Hospital. So if you go out and get a Dairy Queen treat there today, you'll know that your money is going to good use. It. We had Hillary Mork, she was out with you today, but Hillary Mork with uh, Sanford also was on our show yesterday talking okay. about it. Mm -hmm. And then we do have the video because we saw the competition. Uh, we were wondering who won. Did Abby won win, even so though Hillary? she was kind of messy? A mess. And, and to win, you actually are crowned. Look at this. It's like the crowning ceremony. Look how excited I get. And then she takes it right out of my hands. I was like, oh my goodness. Teresa did win, and but she had, she had an upper hand on it. She used to work at Dairy Queen back yeah, in the day. That's an unfair advantage. But is that made out of uh, Dairy Queen spoons? It's like a red crown, and then Hillary taped a couple red spoons onto it this morning, and it's just so much fun. But... She did. I, I agree. She had an advantage. I'll just have to go practice. Go well, practice. You have until next year. And you know what? We could have crowned you because Abby brought back uh, blizzards for everyone here uh, in our newsroom anyway. So everyone was cheering for you and it's, happy. Oh, you didn't need the crown. I have the of support sports. of the Valley Today team. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need. So there you go. Go and get your uh, blizzard today and help mm. out the Children's Miracle Network. It's Absolutely. such an awesome, awesome thing that's happening today. Now, this is just one of those because we drink a lot of coffee oh, in the gosh, mornings. Yeah. I wanted to give people the heads up. You were in Moorhead today. Yep. And if you get your or Starbucks in Moorhead, you're going to want to know this in addition to your ice cream in Moorhead today. Uh, the Starbucks is closed. Maybe just temporarily, though. Yeah, that's usually a very popular place it for is. people. I, I think it's the only drive through in South Moorhead. I've waited in that line. Uh, apparently, they're doing some renovations. So you're going to have to get your cup of joe somewhere else, at least for a little bit. Right. And I know it's so popular because it's right off of 8th Street. It's right, right by that I-94 interchange. But yeah, it is going to be closed for renovations. They're going to have a little makeover. But of course, Starbucks is like the Valley today. They're like a family. Yes. So they're encouraging others to go to other Starbuckses in the area. And they're hoping to be open again next month. So it's not going to be too long 
of a wait if you that is your Starbucks that you just love and have to go to. So that's good. And it will probably be worth the wait. A little reno. Yeah, you'll walk in and be like, oh my mm, goodness. Brand new. It's a like brand the new, new Dick's. Starbucks. I wonder if the coffee will be like tastes like new so and much improved. better. It's just like new. <laughs> You've waited so long for these renovations to be done. That'll be funny. But okay, have you heard about this little combination that Cheez-Its is doing. I think I know where you're going. <gasps> I am 100% behind it. I will be the first to buy this box. So for all those who are like us and love wine and cheese, it is a beloved combination, but it's not always easy to buy them together. I know sometimes it's like, what wine goes with what? So this summer though, you can enjoy the savory pair by just pairing a box of Cheez-Its with the Winemaker House Wine. They're doing it for you. They're combining their brands into one. And so starting tomorrow, a two-in-one box with the crunchy snack on one side and a house red blend on the other will be available online for just $25. I think that's a good deal. I and, think it is too. You know, I love Cheez-Its, uh, but you don't see Cheez-Its in the, uh, the liquor store. No. So, you know, I guess <laughs> you have to go funny. to the grocery store. Like, this is super convenient. Just order this. Look, at we could have a picnic. That would be so, and I think it'll be fun if, like, this is, like, the test run, and then they try, like, different wines with different cheeses. There was a bit of a debate in the uh, newsroom as to, I, my favorite is just the regular cheeses, oh, the cheddar really? cheeses. Yeah, what, what's your favorite? The white cheddar. The white cheddar? Yeah. Okay, someone else, I think Jordan Schreer said white cheddar, and then one of the other producers said, is there like a, oh, what did he say? There's a spicy one. Oh, I take mine back. That's the favorite. The, the spicy the one? The spicy one. I forgot about that. I haven't so, had Cheez-Its in a long time. I, you know, well, because I have children, and I pack, like, snacks. Oh, yeah. Cheez-Its cheez and, and goldfish. So maybe they'll have a goldfish and wine box, too. You know, Cheez-Its. There we go. What else do we give? Uh, I'm trying to think. Cheez-Its. Okay, and then it has to be, like, flavor-blasted goldfish. Yes, right. Normal goldfish, the colored goldfish. You can get really creative with this, honestly. And I would totally be happy with someone gifting me one of those boxes, oh, too. absolutely. I will say this, though, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm going to go back to, I'm changing my mind again. I'm going to go back to the white cheddar and wine because I feel like the spicy and wine with would wine. not. You know what? I said that to the producer, and, and he said, everything goes with wine. I'm like, I don't no, know. I'm thinking like I don't think spicy, spicy would be more like, that'd be more like with beer. Yeah. So if they have a beer and spicy Cheez-Its box, there you go. We should go into the marketing. I think we should. Know, we should just leave right now. Expand this. <laughs> We're out. <laughs> We're going to cheese it. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you saw this video yesterday, but I can't get it mm. out of my mind, uh, especially since, I, like I mentioned, and you know my, my two daughters, yep. you babysit for me, uh, similar in age to the yeah. girl in this video. And I'm sorry, this video can be kind of upsetting to some people. Yellowstone National Park officials say a mm. bull bison oh my tossed a nine-year-old girl into the air when the animal charged a group of about 50 <laughs> tourists. <laughs> You see everybody start running, but that little girl, it doesn't even look real. And, uh, and we can show this because apparently she was not super badly hurt, but um, park officials say, you know, you should really not be that close uh, to the animals. No. Uh, the tourists were within five to 10 feet of the animal uh, for over 20 minutes. Um, what we're hearing is that the girl was taken to the uh, faithful lodge by her family for treatment. Um, she was later taken to a clinic but released. Uh, this all happened at Point Trail, which is an area of the old faithful geyser. Um, oh my goodness. Isn't that just terrifying to see that? Anyway. That is, like, watching it, my heart is like, Ooh, oh my goodness. Grab her, grab her. Like, I, I know, just, I'm like, like, and I get like kids, you know, it's just like, I don't yeah. know. I, I'm not, not a parent shamer, but I always feel like, you know, I feel like if I was with my daughters, I'd be like, take me. You yeah, know? right. You know, you like everybody just, them. I think it was just in the, the panic of the yeah. moment. Everybody took off running and, you know, she was the closest yeah. person to the animal, Oof. but terrifying. Yeah, terrifying I know. Terrifying and horrible. One time when I was like out at my grandparents' farm, we were with my aunt and uncle and it was like all of us grandchildren. There's like 11, 10 of, seven of us, seven of us. And the cow started charging us. But like my aunt and uncle started picking us up and just like tossing us over the electric fence because I think they go for like that smaller target maybe. Makes sense. Oof. I mean, that makes my heart. I couldn't even imagine being I know, a parent. it's right. I know, I'm like, I'm sorry, I couldn't get this out of my mind and then I wanted to show yeah. you. But hopefully so you it just, you know, reminds people just yeah. to be careful and that wildlife, you know.
Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, earlier, uh, well, the end of June, we were out in Medora, yes. North Dakota today. And hopefully people are a little more careful when they're traveling to mm. the North Dakota Badlands because we have, you know, bison, a lot of wildlife out there. But this is a, a happier story uh, <laughs> for you. Uh, North Dakota's travel and tourism season is on track, apparently, to beat last year's numbers. So apparently there are a lot of Ooh. people out in the parks. Last year, there were more than 1.3 million visitors at state parks and events. And this year, campgrounds are seeing a spike in visitors with 30 percent of campers coming from out of state. And like you got to see, the Medora musical is on track to top last year's attendance. So far, more than 55,000, oh my goodness, people have watched the musical on pace for over 120,000 before year's end. And the musical's record year was in 2015 when more than, I can't believe this, 124,000 people attended. Because I know we kind of get a lot of heat being like, oh, Fargo, North Dakota, or like you're North from Dakota. North Dakota. And it's like, you people, kind of forget there's so many people. It's like such a gem out there yeah. to, to see. So, And there's plenty of summer still left. You know, we're talking exactly. about back to school and stuff, but there's still time if you uh, want to take the family out. Don't get close to the bison. Don't get close to the bison. Just but go to the musical. It's yes. nice and safe there. And you get to see elk, you know, running up right. on, the, on the hill behind the And you the, went on a horseback ride. Yes, I so did. So do that. That's do that. safer. Much safer. <laughs> Well, we have a great show planned for you today. Stay with us. Coming up next, we're going to be talking to Trevor Hill, one of our favorite designers, who's just about off to market. We're going to talk about the latest trends.